Recording in progress. So it's really. Yeah, he's got it. Yeah. But I want it refined. We did refine it okay. since. Uh, I think I might have that. Oh, oh we yeah. find we find it quite a lot. Yeah. Because he, he does a lot of support things for you that I think we need to look at. Yeah. You know. Um, it's gonna be tough to find someone with that skill. Maybe somebody that's already employed by me. Okay. I'm going to talk. No. Anyway. Uh, and, but we have to get, you know, of course, we're to pay to make a difference for him. So, yeah. All right. Depending on what we want to do. I mean, he's got his, he plows for us already. He'll have to get a CDL because he drives a smaller truck, but he's uh, willing to come to work for us if we can get him up in a half a decent roll Why don't you send me the job, just send us the job description. Yeah. Um, right. Actually, maybe he could um, put together, see for a resume. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be good. But I really think you need somebody that has this, the computer skills too. Oh yeah. Uh, not, and this is not no. a slant. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, absolutely. It can help you do the budget, help you do the numbers, the things that you need to get done. Okay. So, um, not necessarily because it was related to the position, but more so someone needed to have ownership? Yeah, yeah. We, we, I mean, it's it, they're putting more and more stormwater on us since the position. I mean, when I was hired, it was to hand on, mm -hmm. basically. You know, they didn't tell me to be, you know, going to be getting into, I mean, budgets and stuff. I've worked through that. Yeah. But uh, as far as uh, doing, you know, all the stormwater, attending all the stormwater meetings, and all that stuff, it started to get, you know, taken away from the position, you know, and doing, trying to get things done. I mean, two people, three people, you're not getting a lot done, and, you know, so that's why we tried to. Caroline was talking about putting it, and that's when she actually, when that actually brought up the possibility that he wasn't going to be here to her. So he never, we never pushed that issue. So we were hoping that, you know, we could get somebody with some more knowledge into the position. Well, let's do a review of it. Send it, send it to us, and yeah, we'll sit down and talk about it. Yeah, we'll get the I'll have get the. Uh, and it is a high priority, just so you know. Yeah, really. <laughs> so, but, um, I'm wondering if maybe we should have Paul kind of be lead. Yeah, Paul can do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Paul can do that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, we can have him come in too, so I mean, he's still here until 4th. Yeah, I, I'd like to do that. Um, we have a meeting Monday, right? I didn't get an email about that. About? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, I, I got it. I got it. Yeah, I did. It's in the same meetings, yes. Oh, yeah. Can you clarify for the record what you're talking about? Oh, sure. Um, oh, Ed sent an, an, a letter. Oh, I'm sorry. Ed, Ed Walsh has resigned from uh, the town. He has a new job offer, and he sent us a letter this morning saying that he was resigning in two weeks. By right now, effective now, but two weeks out. And we're looking 
need to, we need to replace it. I don't do this. So. and then um, I think we'll probably have to just adjourn. Apologies, you guys. I don't know what happened to Paul. But, um, well, the, the other thing is is um, Paul can watch the meeting. <coughs> um, and then you know, he can bring his comments um, to the next meeting. It doesn't matter to me. You know either way. It's, it's really up to these guys as well because they came out for but, this. But the problem is if he brings his comments, they'll have to be back for that too, anyway. Right? Potentially. Mm -hmm. I, I think it'd be better if he just showed up. That would be ideal. <laughs> well, let's. Okay. Wave your magic wand, right? Yeah. yeah. Send the broom out. Oh, he's on his way. No. <laughs> he just got a homework. He's got a couple minutes. <clears throat> So if, if you could do that, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. And come on and be the job description. Yeah, we could walk through it. Did you have a chance to read the new slide of that? I didn't. I apologize. I'll do oh, this with them. This with them. But it does have to be done by the end of next week. I haven't even seen it. Mm -hmm. I said it maybe mid afternoon. Um, yeah. I'll wait till Paul gets to the next slide. That position needs to be split between both departments, I think, as far as salaries go, too, because it involved a lot of the transfer station stuff. Well, actually, tomorrow, but no, next week we'll be working on it next week. Oh, I need it at the printers by the first of the month, which is a week from Monday. Okay. So, what you're looking for, um, I mean, I'll go back and read it, but it's content from the select board? Correct. Okay. Hmm? No. Sorry, I'm sorry. And I don't have Ed's yet either. Yeah, we talked about the other day. Tell them. Yeah, we'll, get, we'll try to get into it. Okay. And I don't have anything for fire either. What does this mean? The fall newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're busy. We're busy. Mm. So many hours in a day. <laughs> if you want, you can just. We're actually just going to give just you Just write a few ideas down as to what yeah, you Yeah, I'm just going to make you a big want ad. You can put that in there. What? A big want ad? Yeah. Help wanted. Help wanted. Okay. That's a good idea. I think that would be a good yeah, idea. Yeah, so cloud drive is on there too. Just, in, just in, <laughs> stir up the clock a little. Well, well let's everybody. do that. Let's do a big help wanted ad. Yeah. Well, Firefighters. Just... Everybody gets a tax but bill from me, we can reach out and find somebody. Yeah, maybe somebody in town might be interested in blowing smoke. If you get one, it's a positive. Because we don't know what's going to happen. It's a good idea. While we're waiting, can you ask some questions last night about the radios? Yes. Um, and I went back and researched that for you. Yeah. So the funding provided for 11 handheld radios okay. and four radios that went into the truck. Yeah. So with what we purchased this year, we still have 12 to replace. So let me ask you about um, what's the total you have to re replace? So. 
just counting all of the positions. So basically every position on each apparatus has to have a radio okay. assigned to it plus the chief officers. Okay. So 5, 6 is 11, 11, 4, 15, 17, 22, 24, 27 radios. Okay. Plus um, each apparatus has a radio in it as well, plus the base station that is actually in the station. So how many people do you typically have at an event that would require, I mean, do you usually have 15 people at an event that require radios at the same time? So, so the, the challenge is actually from the emergency side. Mm -hmm. So each radio is programmed with the location of who has that radio. So if they press their emergency alert button, it says engine two, tail two. Mm -hmm. So that in an emergency, we know who we're looking for. So you can't just pass radios from one to the next because you don't Sorry, know who like. the personnel is lost that's hit their emergency alert. Yeah. If you just shuffle radios around, you either need to, so most like full-time departments. So you have to reconfigure them? So when we press the emergency alert button on the radio, yeah. Dover Dispatch gets an alert that says, this specific oh. radio just is assigned to the alert. So full-time departments assign it to the actual person. So if I'm on Dover and I hit my emergency alert, it says, you know, Sean Glidden. They know who they're looking for. We do it by the apparatus. Mm -hmm. So it says, you know, engine to this position so we know who's looking because that position could be a different person every time and, you know, we can't buy radios for everybody in the department. Um, so there's 27 positions? There's 27 said? seats on the, mm -hmm. the various apparatus plus the chiefs. And how many radios on an apparatus? So engine one has five seats, so it has five radios. Yeah. Engine two has six seats, so it has six radios. Okay. The car has four seats, it has four radios. And utility two, Forestry 5, tank truck 2. Yeah, I think we need to understand that a little bit better, but that's probably not. <laughs> Let's continue the conversation. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to answer your specific question. Welcome, Paul. Thanks. Sorry, Carly. Uh, it's going to catch up all week. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, um, Facebook is all right. Yep. Got to keep track. That bad, huh? No. So, so, George, um, we, we started out by talking about Ed Walsh resigning. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. Yeah. I talked to him this morning. I said, "There's no way we're going to get him to stay because he got a job in his own town, four minutes from his house, yeah. with an increase." Yeah, I figured that. Yeah. So, I mean, so it sounds good. So I think he did a great job. Go old with that. Now. So I've asked George to uh, get him to refine the job description that he has. And put what I'd like to see is computer skills in there too, because I know that George needs assistance with that. And have Ed come in and pre to present to us what he thinks about the job, and let's put it out. Figure out what we're doing. All right, for the same salary that I was. Well, we probably need to do a little bit of research. Yeah. We probably need to. So prior to. I'm just asking the question. I'm not putting an overburden on George. But prior to George and Ed, there was just highway. There was mm -hmm. never a transfer. Was there ever a full-time transfer position? Mm -hmm. okay. When I started, there yep. was none of this recycling. Recycling, none of this right. other stuff. Ed and I worked together to get the comp, the baler in, etc. Build the recycling buildings, and then uh, we went from there. That works big with uh, NRA, Northeast, Northeast recovery, 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 yeah. recovery, yeah. Trying to get the best prices we can on anything we recycle. It's, that job is almost a full-time job, the recycling center. So we broke away. When we started getting into it, we made Ed the manager of the transfer station because he could spend more time trying to get savings for us and, and generate revenue. And generate revenue. That's why the position ended up 
we made it train to a station manager at the time. Uh, and then at the time, there was a time when we were making actually making money on recyclables. We are still making money. We were making recycling. a really good amount of money. Right now, we're making halfway decent money on recyclables. Good. So, it was uh, like 56000 wasn't it? Last time I heard? Uh, something like that. Was with I, I thought it was pretty close. close. Yeah. So, uh, by doing that, of course, Ed spends a lot of time doing transfer station stuff. Yeah. During the work week, you know, even though it's, you know, he's working for us. And that's why I brought up again tonight, if that position was split pay-wise between both departments, it would look like it's, you know, and that's again, it's just a money thing, uh, you know, it's just a, a number on the, on the paper. Looking at that position today and across the state, and it's the ones that actually just did these, the same thing for that position. You're, look, you're looking at a 22, <coughs> 22 to $26 pay scale for that position. Uh, because of all the, uh, you know, what, what has to happen in, to, you know, making sure you, you to try to make money for the town. So, uh, Ed did not leave for money. Yeah, that position came looking for him. I mean, it, being a selectman, he saw the position open up, and he said, you know, he started thinking about what's what, and uh, they made the price, and he stayed out of that discussion the whole time was going on up there. And uh, he applied for the position, and he got it, but he's, you know, money, money wasn't going to change his mind, no matter what. I mean, I got five minutes at home, and, you know, got that. commute and all that stuff. And, uh, but, All right. Uh, Do you want to start? We want to start with um, George's presentation, Jack. Sure. That's um, fine. Or actually, not presentation, but um, so we, do you want to kind of talk about why we asked him to come down? Yeah, we've asked you to come to talk about uh, your salary and what you're talking about about overtime and <laughs> you know, and hours and all that stuff, so that everybody understands. It. Okay. Uh, the road agent position here is, I believe the town, when they hired me, believes it's like a highway director, which it's definitely not that same type of position. A highway director has an office, sits in his office, and dedicates people to doing his job. I started here October 17th of 2017. The total position was going to be for $55,000. When I asked for three weeks vacation, that position went to $52,000, so I, in, in sense, paid my own vacation that year and took a cut with no overtime. I understood the, the, the salary schedule, uh, but then we got talking and I says, you know, I worked a lot of our weeks in excess of 70 hours that winter uh, for the 53000 at the time. I was making about $16 an hour, where Ed was making $24 an hour because he was getting overtime. And the plow driver was making $20 bucks an hour, another $4 an hour more than I was, which I didn't feel was quite fair. Of course, I brought the subject up and it was shot down right off. There was nothing to be no overtime for the position. I offered to do the position for 50 hours at that salary and get overtime after 50 hours. However, uh, that would also you, shot down. At the 50 or at the 40? I would have done it at the 50, but I was shot down. So that's not on the table anymore. Um, what, what do you get paid now? Right now, my salary is uh, about 50. Um, it is 55, 693. Yeah, so it comes out to my hourly pay scale is 26.77 for 40 hours. It would be 26.40. Uh, 2677. That's what it would come up to at 40 hours. The average paid for working foreman is instead of I'm using working foreman versus director of highway departments is about 29.50 an hour. Where did you get that number? With overtime, I got did a survey. I got it. I tried to get. I I got it to the uh, New Hampshire municipal, no, I couldn't get into the New Hampshire municipal state. Oh, the state, it's the state website though. You right. I got it from different, I went to New Hampshire uh, 
UNH, and they, I got it from different towns. I didn't get nothing local because nobody sent me any photos. So I knew the numbers that I had given to me from them, uh, which uh, hourly positions it averaged at 29.50. Salary positions were at 62.5 to 75,000. So, but that's, you know, with my position being as low as it is, is why I, you know, try to get up to somewhat what, you know, closer to my constituents. I, uh, I do have, you know, we are only two full-time employees. I was told not to work more than 40 hours, uh, but to get the job done, you can't do that. You know, I mean, we plow snow for 80 hours a week, but from home after 40, you know, they're taking away people from the, from the position. Uh, you know, and then the position we, uh, when I was start, when I got hired, was to start doing more projects in house, and we have been doing that. The first year they gave me a thousand dollar increase for performance because you know we started doing projects and getting involved in uh, more on the outside, well, doing the projects that. I would probably should be doing. It's not a case of plowing snow in the winter and doing nothing in the summertime. There's plenty of things to do, plenty of things that should have been getting done that haven't been apparently. So what I've been told. Uh, we found projects that did get a little costly when, when we had roads rebuilt, and we found a you know ways of saving money on them projects also by doing the shoulder work ourselves and just doing the shoulder works we saved fifteen thousand dollars in each project doing the work in-house, so I'm, I feel that I've contributed my part to the town. I'm just trying to get a little bit more, you know, to uh, recoup some of, uh, you know, some hourly pay. So, I mean, not much more I can say uh, other than the fact that, you know, with the market out there right now, it's, I'm not threatening anybody. I don't have any intention to go anywhere. I love what I do. So, I mean, I'm just asking for a little bit, you know, a little bit more compensation for what So, George, you sent an email that kind of outlined a couple options. Yeah. Um, can you go over those for us? I can look that with you. Can, um, I can put those in the are you looking, are you looking for, you're looking for increasing your salary, right? Yep. Okay. Well, actually, I would prefer going out with because, you know, I mean, so the, the position. So, so here's where I have a little concern about that. You know, um, go hourly. And I understand in the winter you're going to have some plowing, you're going to have a lot of plowing. There's times during the year where, like, you know, April, March, that type of year, so I don't, I don't know if you, you know, offsets it for the hours there. And not as much work being done, as much work to be done. It's always 40 hours a week worth the work to do in this town. I mean, it's, we're playing catch up. We're, you know, we're trying to fix the infrastructure as much as we can. Where, you know, we, we do stuff in the town hall, we fix things. You know, there's always something to do. We're not just sitting around doing nothing. We're playing, you know, we find things to do, whether it be at the transfer station trying to keep stuff cleaned up, and, you know, we're always finding things to do. It's very seldom you can see us just sitting around doing nothing. I mean, we've had times where people come in and meet with us and stuff like that. And, but uh, I try my best to get as much done in the day or a week as we can. So, uh, you know, if you're you know, concerned about what we do, then maybe it's time somebody comes to see what we do. Well, I have come and seen what you guys are doing stuff. And, you know, and I'm not saying that you guys want to stay, stay busy, but I'm saying there's times. Slow times during slow times during the course of the year that there may not be you know forty hours worth of power, forty hours of work to do every single week, where it makes up in the summer and the winter. I mean, that's kind of what I'm getting. I mean, April is a perfect month. Well, look, yeah, that's a perfect time for us to take vacation too. Who wants to take vacation in April? <laughs> I have. <laughs> All right, it's a so good time to cruise. Oh, that's not right now. <laughs> um, so what George had submitted with this budget <clears throat> narrative was um, so an increase 
um, from fifty-five six ninety-three to sixty thousand, um, or thirty dollars an hour from twenty-six seventy-seven, plus overtime after fifty hours, or make it an hourly position. Budget. So the salary was sixty, basically sixty thousand five hundred bucks. That's what it was looking for, right? Originally, yeah. What's originally? Well, when I first put that in, I mean, it's. I, I, I'm, I'm willing to work. I just, you know, I'd like to get compensated for the bond I was. Let's see. So. I think, oh, I think I looked at this, George. You said that made it um, an increase in the line item of 6707. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> actually, um, yeah, actually, the math's not quite right. So if you go to, if it goes to 60,000, that's twenty eight eighty four an hour. Right then. Yeah. Um, but I mean your salary. Um, and that's yes. you don't really talk about hourly rate when your sure. salary. So, and I get an increase um, between 55, 693, um, yeah, um, so it's an increase <clears throat> from 55, 693 to 60,000 is $4,307, not $6,707. And again, you have to do it. So it's less of an increase um, than in the here. Yeah. And I, I mean, the last, since I've been here, every budget of mine has turned in 40, to, well, 40 plus thousand dollars back into the system where we haven't used it. Uh, so I know there's, you know, there was money available to increase things, but again, you know. I don't see that not feasible. I'm just speaking for me right now. Really you don't think what? I see that as being feasible. I mean, I know oh, it's, a big, it's a big jump, but, you know, he hasn't been compensated for a while, and probably what I don't want to say expect, but hope that, you know, that he's going to be able to help out with the world. takes over for the transfer for us, helping them out, getting on board and oh, stuff. Absolutely. So, what about the yoga time? But, well, I don't know that I, you can That's a slippery over. slope. Yeah, I don't think you can earn overtime when you're a salary position, not exempt. I'm pretty sure you can. I was talking about yeah. okay and the salary for the six thousand yeah. salary and it just seems like it's happy with that and I don't see an issue with but Yeah. I think you're either non exempt or you're exempt and I think there's um, a, an over like you can ask Michelle Small because she works for the Department of Labor, but um, and I don't mind even sending her an email, but I'm pretty sure that you can't do both. You might be able to get comp time. Okay, well, we'll get back, we'll get on the comp time issue. They didn't like to have the comp time. They wanted to have the comp time within the first, within the pay period I was usually working the extra hours. Well, it, it doesn't work that way. You know, I mean, I was told if you use your comp time in the pay period, it doesn't work that way. I don't you know, think and there was another interesting time. blog about comp time. You know, because there was no real comp time there. No, I'm just saying I think that may be legal, but... Um, I don't know how it works in state level. I know there's different people I work with that are, depending on what their salary is, they'll work, like, up to 50 hours, and the pay from 40 to 50 will be, like, straight time. I don't know. I don't know how that works, actually. Um, so, um, so, Paul, I mean... Paul, do you want to make that motion? I mean, if we do it with this, if we do it with open, uh, you know, go to a uh, early position too. I mean, it's, I don't care which way we do this. It's just, you know, again, 
most of your working foremen are in hourly position in most towns around here. And directors are the ones that are salary positions. Um, so maybe we don't make a decision though. No. Because it's, I would like to try to find a little bit of market data as well um, to see and see how it's handled. See, that's like I said, I tried to get that to the municipal association, which they have it available. We, 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 Chuck, we'll, couldn't we'll, get, we'll look on Chuck couldn't get me into it. And uh, then, uh, well, the NJ's the other one, he could have gotten me with shoes on vacation, but I didn't want to bother with that this week. So, yeah. But I was trying to get that. I mean, you know, I, mean, I, I got I some, some data from different towns, but it's, you know, it's not the official state data sheet that's there. Okay. We'll look at it. Thank you, George. Yeah, the only thing I'll say is, I, again, I have to work on what the state says, but I think your position is technically... I don't know that we want to we want to go towards the comp time option at this point, because you kind of then set a precedent that you have to do it across different right, departments. Right, but if the position is a certain position, like highway director or highway commissioner or whatever it is, what Tom Rawls did, it's probably dictated that it's a, oh, a, a salary type of job as opposed to what you're saying that you, you believe you are is like... Well, I'm just saying that. Right. Like, there's going to be a whole major, There's going to be a huge difference between like of the town. Towns. Say you can take Dola. Right. Right. You know, they probably have a highway director with a good salary and three or four people underneath them that do all. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do? No, I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. but he's I'm saying he'd be the next level under the highway director in a town like Dola. Right. Okay. I think. I don't even put words. In no, but no, that's exactly what I mean. Because of the size of our department. I have to work with the crew, so I, you know, right. that makes it a whole different ballgame. It's not like I'm just sitting at a desk all day directing the foreman to do what he's doing and stuff yeah. like that. It, it, it Is that how that works? <laughs> You're a working manager. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. so, so we'll do a little research and, um, and contemplate that. I, see, I personally, like, I think. I would consider this the salary, but I probably wouldn't do anything with overtime or call time. I, I agree on some of that, but we should also see what the if there is a certain regulation for the position and it's just a title anyway. It doesn't have to be a you know titles aren't worth anything. Mm -hmm. No, I mean this you know, I I'm just trying to make it fair. I mean it's no, no. Okay. because you know that's quite a difference in pay, that, you know, when the other guys are getting overtime and on the other No, I agree. No, I think in, yeah, I have to agree. So we'll look at that and we'll get back to you. And yeah. right. We'll send you an email to get Ed in here, and I know it can't be a Wednesday night. Oh, yeah, so you had to quit. Oh, he has, he left the board, too. He left the select board. <laughs> well, I'd say George is, um, I don't want, again, I, I would say we'll probably, would probably be reasonable 60000 It's time, what you do, and what needs to be done for the town. I, you know, I, 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 I just think that, you know, the position, and, and, you know, with the other position, of, and I don't know if you want to talk about getting that, but, you know, we want to have it bring the job description in, it's fine. We can do that. Yeah, I, I would just like to kind of review it while he's still here. Yep. And kind of go through that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we'll try and make it. To look at our schedule and see if we can get it. We'll, we'll, we'll send something. Back. Yeah, we do. Okay. Thanks, George. Thank you. Thank you, George. Yeah. Chief. Sir. Your day. <laughs> discussion about this last night. Um, has everybody read the contract for the 
the town provides and what they're asked to do for the with your game notes? Yes. Have you guys seen that? I read it. Okay. And there was changes that were in there with uh, that I had submitted because there was some discrepancies that were happening, not on a regular basis, but enough that there was going to be some uh, liability issues if we had not cleaned some of those up. So that's why some of those are in there now. Uh, basically, the position it oversees that contract, keeps an eye on it, make sure it's balanced, make sure they meet the responsibilities which the town is asking them to provide. Um, basically, every EMS call that comes into town, we don't go to all of them. They average, oh, I don't know, 25 to 30 in a month, if not more. That's on the low end. Fire department probably goes to a third of those. Um, we basically review every one that we go to um, for multiple reasons. One, to make sure compliance within the contract. Two, to make sure that uh, hospital needs are met and all the EMS are, the, the, are crossed and dotted so that we don't leave anything open. So we're checking on all that stuff. Um, I have contact with, her name is Kim Tucker. She's one of the, not the directors, but she's the next one down in New York. She sends me all the information on a monthly basis so that I can review the calls that they come in on. Because they come in on calls that are transportable and non-transportable. So they may come in 15 times and not even do anything more than a patient contract and contact and then they head off. Uh, they return in their quarter. So, and then there's the other ones that are, uh, what have we been going to this week, Sean? We've been to uh, uh, cardiac arrests and ODs and those require us to go assist them. And again, as I said, we review all that stuff when we're done. The state requires a medical report uh, on every EMS call generated by the intensis report. But they need to have our information to go on to that report. So if there's ever any feedback, legal legalities and whatnot, all the information is laid out for them. So we make sure that's complete. Uh, I also have contact on a regular basis with Gene. I don't remember his last name again. Do you remember? Streck. Streck. He is the actual operations manager in... South Burke, where they house their ambulance. Mm -hmm. So uh, Gene, is, uh, he's been very helpful to us. Uh, he helps us with our training. He's very good on calls. We've made some uh, adaptations to how we respond through what he sees when he leaves. Because there's, there's a bit of a, I don't want to use the word breakdown, but there's, a, there's some flaws in the system as far as when the calls come into Sanford, because they're dispatched by Sanford, they're not always uh, classified as a proper level of treatment needed. So they know it. So they know, and they, actually, they know a lot of the patients we have in town because it's repeat uh, going to the same folks. So Gene will just say, start the fire department. He knows he's going to need our help so that we go. Uh, they're supposed to be categorized by Sanford. It doesn't always happen. Dover's are dispatched. They don't have anything on the medical end of the things. That goes through Sanford, then it comes back around to us. So with Gene, he's able to help us make sure that we get to what we need to go to. And as soon as he leaves the station, he'll ask if fire is started. If it's not, he immediately dials up Dover Dispatch and gets us dispatched. So who do you send? Do you just send it to the ambulance truck? Or I, who do you send from your group? You send um, a fire truck? Yeah, you go send a fire engine. Send three or four guys on an engine. Because the kind of thing, the more the better. I mean, uh, I've explained numerous times when we go to fires, we need a certain amount of folks to do fire stuff. We need a certain amount of folks to do medical aid stuff. If you're going to go to a cardiac arrest and it's going to develop into CPR or something, you need about five or six people to take care of that. So this person can have the best point of survival. They show up with two. So if we can show up with two or three or four, it's not only the fact that we may be in the back helping them out, we may end up being a driver to get to the hospital because he may not be an EMT or whatnot. So there's different roles that we're going to fill to help the ambulance service when they come into town. Gene has also been very helpful with, um, he's big on training. We're big on training. It's the one thing that you got to do to make everything work is to constantly be doing repetitive uh, actions so that everybody becomes confident with each other. He wants to bring his folks over so they know us. We want us to know them. So we get on these scenes. A lot of times it's just eye contact and you know what somebody needs because we've worked so hard. Um, they've got a brand new ambulance, which I still want you people to come and see, so that we can understand where the equipment is, so you don't have somebody looking through five doors to find one piece of equipment. That bothers the hell out of me when somebody does that. 
but at least we have a working knowledge of where it is, get the equipment, and get it into the, uh, wherever the scene is, whatever we're doing. So the training is a big aspect, that aspect of that. We try to do it monthly. The, uh, he's on on Monday nights. Monday night is our work and training night. So we coordinate that so that we can come in and get that stuff taken care of. Uh, I also uh, liaison between the state, their needs, state region three, Seacoast uh, EMS, picking up all their emails, all the information that they have on things that are changing and updates and whatnot. So I keep an eye on all of that stuff. Uh, Sean is a great help. He helps uh, organize. We do the same thing through the ambulance if we're doing CPR classes, uh, first responder classes, because we need to have our people have that and do recertification. Sean does the teaching on that kind of stuff with Gene and the ambulance coming over and helping us. So that's another aspect that we need to keep our people certified. We've got nine ENTs, one, two paramedics now. One just came on us. Do you know Nick? You know Nick, 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 Nick very well. Mark, before you took on the <clears throat> ambulance contract, who was taking care of that? Anybody. Anybody had to sign it and draft it. Well, so, somebody signed it and drafted it, but nobody oversaw it. But, um, so do you know who signed and drafted it? It's always, it's, been been it's always been the select, select board. board. So yeah. the select board yeah. oversaw that. Yeah. But, it, okay. but it was money going out and nobody watching it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It, was, it used to be 32. I want to say now it's 36 or 37, because it's creeped up. It's been on a two or three year basis that they've been running the contract. But yes, it was initiated by the select board. So years this ago. contract is good for three years, is it? I think we're in the second year. I think it's maybe the last year right now that we're in. And is there a description of the responsibilities that come with that contract? It's in the contract. No, I mean for maintaining it. Like the person, so if something happens to you, is I'm the contact person, person for the town so now. Who, and after is that there somebody who would know what to be done? Like, is there, is, could it be transitioned if something happened to you? Um, after my name is being the, the primary, it's your folks who's next. But if it was transferred for me, it would go to that gentleman over there. So Basically, just by chain of command within the fire department. If he's more than enough, he is qualified to handle that. Are so you referring like if he came for some reason that he came in? We got hit by a bus. Yeah. Yeah. We got hit by a bus. You know, um, yeah, I get you. who would assume those responsibilities? And is there a I like to say one in the million box. You know, one in the million box and just let's see what That's true. Yeah. It sounds about it. So, so, so some of it's outlined in that contract. So mm -hmm. if you look at the contract, it talks about the reports that they provide on the on the routine basis, monthly okay. basis. All of that is in that contract. Yep. Um, beyond that, just the liaison all of the EMS stuff that we do mm -hmm. it is partly in our SOPs, SOGs, and partly in the state requirements. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be a single document that you could look at mm -hmm. because the state says you know, for a non-transporting agency you must do X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a state law or state statute, I guess it would be. And then we have SOP and SOGs on how we interact and the different License levels and all of that. Um, but so, but all of the, the reporting responsibilities that you're talking about, um, the select board formally did that. No, no, no but all went So we were in violation of some some terms of contract. Well, it was taken care of through the ambulance themselves and what the fire department needed to do. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so much that the select board had to take care of all that stuff. It kind of fell down to that next level, and we just picked up the pieces and ran with it. Uh, because we also have, uh, we work with WDH an awful lot. Uh, we've been liaison with them for their reason, because that's the main transport where York Ambulance takes all their patients, so we're in there quite a bit, so there's also the liaison with them. Uh, same with training opportunities through the hospital that we're able to get to because of that. Um, I get the CPR classes, Seacoast Region 3 is another one, but it's a lot the same way as what we do with fire. We've explained to you over and over the amount of certifications and the checks and balances we need to do. The EMS is the same thing. Uh, there's three or four different things that you're mandated to do and to take care of and report. And, and, and we before, haven't been doing that. And before it wasn't really watched. Yeah. No, it was done through the ambulance and I never had any choices. We never really were that tied in with the ambulance before, so other than the reports that they would leave or send to the hospital or send to their um, documentation areas, we never really looked at those. Now um, we're more involved in that stuff. So, so we would get that information by reading, rereading. I'll say rereading the contract. 
what, so what the gaps were with the last board would be defined by reading the contract. So, so I think you've got to look at it in two different ways, right? Mm -hmm. New York Ambulance is a relatively new entity serving the town. So prior to that, it was self -work Rescue. Mm -hmm. And self -work Rescue's sole purpose was to provide medical care to self -work and Rollinsford. They went out of business. Basically, you know, if there's not enough money coming in mm -hmm. to support that. Mm -hmm. When they came out, went out of business, York Ambulance out of York, Maine, rather than saying, let's dissolve that functioning service, said, we want to take them over and make them part of our umbrella. At the time, the town looked at York Ambulance, Stewart's Ambulance, and Dover Fire and Rescue for ambulance service to provide to the town. Based on the proposals, New York Ambulance out of South Burwick was chosen. When the first contract was written, some of the stuff that we normally got from South Burwick Rescue, because it was two entities, we were very close. A lot of the EMTs that were on the fire department were also on South Burwick Rescue. That stuff kind of happened naturally, went away because York Ambulance out of York was kind of just managing it and you know they viewed it just as a, an offset of the station and didn't really have that relationship with us that we were accustomed to from South Burwick Rescue. Are they taking care of South Burwick too? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. They're housed in the South Burwick Fire Station right. and they have two bays, um, day room there, everything. Um, so when that first contract came time for renewal, that's when we looked at it and said, okay, what are the things that we're missing? What are the things that we could be doing to provide better service? And, and that's the things that we added into the contract. Yeah, so five or six different amendments to that that were added in the last contract. And part of the reason was, uh, when we got to deciding which contract they wanted to re-enter into, and all the entities came in and they gave a presentation some of the deciding factors were, of course, with Dover was just cost. And Dover was kind of working hard. What's that? Dover was high. Very high. <laughs> Nature of the beast, because they were going to provide 24 hour paramedic service, which is mm -hmm. highly expensive. Um, we were looking can, I, can I just say, um, we have a whole budget to get through tonight. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should move on to the EMD. And we'll re reread the contract definitely. So, okay. okay. So, quick question though. So, just out of curiosity, this was a conversation probably in the last board, but there were some issues with York and dispatch in a time of, has that changed? Has that gotten better or has that still been an issue? But we've had some meetings with, with their dispatch, Sanford dispatch, with Gene himself. We've sat over there with the supervisor at Sanford uh, dispatch center and tried to work out some of those issues. Have they improved? Yes. Right. Is there still room for improvement? Yes. All right. But, but it has been addressed. We have to address that because we, uh, you hear me all the time telling you the biggest thing in this is time and uh, every second counts. So we're on top of those things as much as we can. So we can address. Let's just talk about the emergency management. If you could just give us a little bit about what you do and how many hours you spend an hour. I, I know you've repeated this three times, but I want these guys here. <laughs> I thought we did this the last time we were all here. <laughs> The EMD thing was um, every time it was made, they had to have an emergency management director. Uh, forever and ever and ever, it was Chief Duchamp. Right. And I think that fell into his realm because uh, he was here. Mm -hmm. And nobody wanted to do it. And what? Nobody else wanted to do it. <laughs> okay. I'll That's give you that. I'll give you that one. Yeah. And, but typically, if you look at the state statute, whenever there's an emergency of any kind Somebody of large scope, it falls under the jurisdiction of the fire chief, of the local jurisdiction, or his designee. That's written right in state, in state RSAs. So, not to be that little... It, that it is a fire chief? It is a fire chief. It, the it, senior, it can't be a police officer? I'm sure it can, but it's written as a senior fire officer on control of that scene, is the one that controls the emergency management situation. That's state statute. So, another violation for the county? So I'm not out. calling it a violation, I'm just going by how they chose to operate it. I'm not going there. 
<laughs> so when, when, when the chief left, the position was obviously vacant. So they obviously needed to do something with it. This was back in June, <coughs> June or July, mm -hmm. whenever he retired. So the select board at that point, we had a discussion as we are now. And since they hadn't even had uh, any discussions on what to do about replacing the chief yet, and they understood where the statutes were, they said, is it something that you're interested in? I says, if it needs to be done, I know where it falls, I understand the responsibilities, if it's something you wish me to uh, take on, I'll take it on. So they voted and it came to me. Now, you were talking about number of hours. I, I cannot assign a number of hours to it, Jack, because earlier in the summer we had, what, two, three hurricanes that headed up this way? Yes, I am. You were required on a monthly basis as an EMD to sign in with the state. You get yourself logged in so that they know that somebody exists. Um, and when they start having these emergencies, the state declares an operational emergency. You are inundated with information from them, from what's going to happen going on in, in the state, from the weather people, from whatever that event is. So obviously I can't be there. Nobody can be there as much as the information is available. So it's available on your phone, available on a podcast. You can catch up and there's other systems that they alert you with that wake up, whether it be a tornado or something like that or a flood. So that kind of comes and goes as far as the amount of hours, the amount of time that's going to require to do that. Um, we're turning into the snow season. It happens the same thing with snowstorms. They're going to give you that same information. They have a, a guideline on where they're going to activate their emergency management center. And a lot of this is more on a vein to give you the resources you need to handle your situation. The state is not going to tell you anything to do. The state's going to say, well, this available to you, this, this, and this, and they'll help you coordinate getting what you need, whether it be personnel, equipment, or information. But do you have to fill out forms like during the month and stuff. Did you tell me that? There can be forms to fill out, but basically it's done going through the computer and signing it into their website. Forms are filled out as you need yeah. information, reimbursement, equipment, then it, then it travels down to that. But at this point right now, it's more of a, just a monitoring stage because we haven't had any emergencies, anything weather-wise. I would say probably 80% of this stuff is all weather-related for the most part. Flooding, hurricanes, tornadoes, snowstorms. Those are the big things. But if we had an incident as we did 25 years ago where the train fell off the tracks over here yeah. at Rollins Crossing, there you go. We were on the borderline with something like that when we had the drowning a year ago for the boy in the St. Paul's River. Mm -hmm. Just because of the amount of personnel and amount of resources that we needed, we could have used their ability to get us the equipment we needed. They help us procure state police, um, uh, mobile command posts, equipment that we needed just by tapping into their resource. So the emergency manager director position to me is basically something that it's sitting there, it's available, you need to know how to operate it so you can jump into the, the equipment and the information you need on a, on a given basis. I can't tell you how often, but I can tell you it's time consuming and it's on a regular basis. All right, well I, I'd like to make a proposal. Oh, on. I, it's a good question. So just Generally speaking, I just want you to feel that normally speaking, when asking a question, not normally speaking, is it usually the fire chief who is it, the, the emergency director and not the police chief, normally speaking? I'm looking at it now. And then the other question was, it is. the other question is just kind of a little hypothetical, but not so much, is you and both both chiefs okay with you taking the role over, or there's no hard feelings for the police chief you taking it over? That you took it over because it, it was just kind of transferred all. He didn't have a whole lot of say in that. And I'm just making the assumption that he didn't have no hard feelings with Nothing it. You're okay with it. Yes. Okay. I've yeah. actually had a couple of conversations with him about that. Yeah. I mean, you're asking which now? Yeah. 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 And, and, yeah. And he was actually very happy with that. He um, wanted to. I, can I? As Kim said, yeah, I just, I just, you must have had inside information, Kim. Of course. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I, I've been thinking about this all night, actually. Uh, what, I, what I was thinking is, what if we made this a separate line item, EMD, paid a flat fee of like $2,500 for that, give you a normal salary raise on top of that. So that's a separate line item. It's controlled by the, by the select board. And then, for example, if you retire, we have the option to either use 
if Sean's the, the fire chief or the police chief to do it. Because Sean might be new being a police or the fire chief, but we have somebody that's seasoned being a police chief. So we make it a separate line item, we pay you a fee for that, and it covers both bases. And it keeps your salary in range with what we're trying to do across the board. Well, I understand that making it a separate line, it does give you more control for that. Right. So that you people have that for future reference, right. for future, future use. No, I don't have a problem with another line item. What do you think about that? So, so you actually have a line item, two line items for EMD right now. 24 through 27 are emergency management. Um, there's a $20,000 or $20, $20, in QuickBooks. In the actual in, town budget. In the operating budget. Not a, not a, not a fire. Not line 24. 224 oh, and 227. Oh, sorry. I said it's not a PD in the visit. No, it's a separate, it's a separate entity. Under 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 yeah, it's the it's the FEMA it's the FEMA, FEMA. And Homeland Security line. Yeah, there you go. That's right. See, I, I think we put it in there as a separate line item that gives us the flexibility. Like I said, it's like you taking it over when Deshaun left. It's yeah. gives us the flexibility to look at it. Now that line item is what, 20? 22. 22. A lot of how that line item is. A lot of that, the way that is set up is, um, I think there is some salary that comes out of it, but it's also there for reimbursement, for recouping. Say that there was something in the town that had to spend some money and right away to solve some, solve an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, once that money, so they would, they would use that money in that line item, yeah. say 15 grand for something near a flood, to take care of some people. Mm -hmm. So that when the money comes back to the town through reimbursement through FEMA or wherever it's going to come from, it would go back into that money. That's the way that was set up. I don't, I don't yeah. know if it goes back into this line item. No, it goes on the revenue side. Yeah, goes well, revenue. either way, but it would be coming back in, and then you could put it back where you need it. But so, yeah. that's how that was set up. Okay, so that's interesting, because last 2020, um, and it was appropriate at $2,100. It was expended at $64,045. In what year? 2020. Yeah, that was because it was COVID. So, so that was the other big thing that we didn't talk about at the beginning of this year. We were on weekly calls for COVID, and that was all for the emergency management stuff. Mm -hmm. We had to provide all the names of all of the firefighters, police officers for vaccination, and do weekly status calls. But that was all of the equipment that the town acquired as part of COVID relief. What is that? Um, so we got sanitizers, we got masks, and yeah. so that that line was expended on COVID resources and supplies. And then the, all of the COVID funds that we got reimbursed went into the general fund. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding. Because mm -hmm. yeah, every every firefighter got twelve hundred and fifty dollars, as did PD. All EMS, all first responders, as part of the COVID relief bill, and that's yeah. that was something that everybody was paid. As a stipend. So that's for some of that right there. So this, so um, I can check with Chuck, but we, we could use that one. Just what do you think, that? Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't know why should. I know. That way, it gives us flexibility in the future if we need it, and it's there, and it takes our salary range right and keeps it in line. No, I'm not sure. Um, I think I can think of one other thing. Um, I'd like to be even more flexible and to make it affordably stipend. So it matches like the select board. Yeah, we get quarterly uh, stipends, right? Quarterly stipend, a la how the fire department is compensated now. Right. Oh, okay. Is that yeah. what you want to do? Yeah. yeah. So we just give it to you on quarters. Right. And then if, some, if you retire or resign and Sean becomes, you know, we haven't fully expended that fund either. Right. What what are we looking to put into the line? I said twenty five hundred. So in essence, you you're getting what you're looking for. It's just coming in a different direction. Understood. Actually, you're getting more than you're looking for. Yeah. Because yeah. it's um, you, if you do, and then you do five percent on. Yeah.
just a little more. A little bit more. Okay. Okay. So that brings out, that would actually bring out to um, 18 to 15. Yeah, you found that. So how do we get that in there? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, well, we could make a motion to, to adjust the, the proposed budget for that. Yeah. Well, we'll make a motion to adjust the proposed budget for that. Yeah, that's when we can work on it. Actually, Jack should make the motion. Yeah. It's his idea. Yeah, make the motion, Jack. So I'll second. I'd like to make a motion to uh, create a line item or move it to a line item called uh, line two two three. Line two two three to increase that by, by an additional twenty five hundred dollars. Are we going to keep it the same name? So, um, so, so let me clarify that. That would make that line forty six hundred dollars. So it was proposed. Um, yes. So that would um, change line two twenty three to forty six hundred dollars. Are you still thinking? No. Um, so I'd like to move that over sit to give to the chief uh, as a stipend for the EMD for quarterly stipend. Thank you. Quarterly pays. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So just so I want to make sure and I already accepted it, but forty six hundred dollars it still has twenty five hundred in it just in case. Twenty one. Twenty one yeah. just yes. in case yeah. we need it for what it's intended yeah. for. Yeah, okay. Just want to make sure I understood that. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask a couple of clarifying questions just so I yeah. um, so, so on the fire department budget, we're going to just increase the chief salary line to 5%, 7 Right. And then the radio line that we had reduced by 5,000, are we keeping that reduction? For now, I'd say yes. I, I want to look at that. Um, let me see what, that is. what I want to do is really when we bring the new town administrator in, this is, again, my thoughts. I want to look at the use of maybe the aqua funds and see if there's anything in there that maybe we could utilize. I know we can use it for police. I know we can use it for water and sewer. I don't know whether we can use it for fire to maybe fill in some of these voids. Maybe, yeah. I just don't know. Yeah, I don't know those do you. I mean, but, I, but supposedly the, the man we're bringing in has some experience in this, and I'd like to to have a conversation with. I think it's a good idea. Um, that makes sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and we really need to decide sooner than later what we're going to do with ARPA because water and sewer would like to take a very big chunk of it. So we would want to look at fire and police first. whose needs are, are much smaller first. I think. Right. And then well, and the other comment I just want to make on that, and it's, I guess, to say in the bigger picture, you know, we allocate X amount, X amount of money for water and sewer. Water and sewer is a percentage of the town taxpayers. Right. Whereas we allocate the money for fire, yeah. police, whatever, it's all taxpayers. I, I, agree. I know you guys understand that, but I just yeah. want to clarify. I, I think that. we can give a portion of it to them. You know, we can do one of the projects right. maybe that they presented to us. Right. And we went out and looked at it, by the way. Yeah. We had a meeting and we went out and looked at yeah. it. And, uh, I mean, I understand some of it, but I, I really want to understand more about it. Yeah, I do too. I understand that. I, I, am, I mean, it raises a red flag about that pipe, but it doesn't, to me, like, raise a red flag of, like, complete, oh my God, type thing. Because it's been there for so long and it seems pretty damn solid. I went off the bill and jumped on it. Yeah, well, I think our bigger concern was um, the Hartridge Court um, um, yeah. issue. Yeah, that was more expensive too, though. Way more expensive. Yeah. And you know, just in sheer, well, just financially, I think it makes sense to use ARPA funds for that project um, because 
it's a much more costly project. You know. We need to have a discussion. That's this whole yeah, we yeah. That's and, and, we, and we really need to understand more about the offer and hoping that yeah. Mike, when we bring him in, we can have a pretty straightforward conversation. Because mm -hmm. apparently he's done some of this before. Yeah, and I think I want to re read the uh, offer. You know, I saw the gentleman who asked you brought forward some information you found in it. Um, so if you, have you read it, Mark? I've been poking through it, yeah. And that's the thing, that sh and the showing you look at. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm looking at maybe we can see the gradient or steps through that or something. Really something. Should be, I agree. We should all get a flexibility. Well, this summer, this summer, this summer, so we're not hitting the budget center. We should all get a copy of that so we can go through an item. I can bring it. Yeah, thanks. I like to read it. I don't want to say I'd like to read it, but it's important that I do. All right, great. So just you. so I can get this straight before we're, we're done, I got just a couple questions. The so chief's line item salary now is 15. Mm -hmm. What's that going to go to? 15, 750. 15, 750. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to add the 2,500. Under the emergency um, homeland security line item. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess my next question is, takes care of what we're talking about with, with, with the chief's salary and whatnot. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen with the firefighter's salary? Did we get anywhere with that last night? Um, I wasn't a spectator. Right, right now, everybody is at, what we're talking about, Mark, right now, everybody is at 5%. Um, and we, um, I personally, and I can't speak for everybody, feel like I understand that we need to get to market, get closer to market. Um, we don't necessarily know what mark it is. Um, I appreciate you guys sent all of that information about the firefighters. Um, at the same time, it's important that we take care of and consider the residents of the town and what they can afford. I totally understand that. I mean, so the challenge, the, one of the challenges we have, yeah. too, if, if you look at the revenue reports, our revenue is down. Mm -hmm. You know? And that, that, that's a big element here. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. So we've we got to consider our, everything. So that's... We're probably doing like 5% is what we're saying right now. Yeah, totally understand. So revenue's down, I think, about 50000 right now for this year. Um, and then when I look at last year's revenue, it was about $1.5 million. Um, the budget that Caroline left me for this year is proposed at $1.2 million, which is pretty significant. So, so we're trying to find a compromise. Okay. That. Anything else? Although we can uh, can work for now. Uh, well, I'm good with that. If, if you requested us, and we mix on common yeah, ground all here. Right? I, I think we are. Uh, okay, very good. Thank uh, you. We are scheduled for Monday night, right? Mm -hmm. I got some things to bring in for you. Yeah, regular meeting on Monday. Okay, you want to bother me that I see you guys more than I see my wife. It's a time of year. It is. Remember when it goes off later than that, I expect to see you. I have a record of the ones I answered to. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. So, um, do, do you want me to try to try to do this and go back through what we talked about last time before? Um, did we feel comfortable with everything except for? Um, these two salary discussions and the rec director position. Yeah, I want to talk about the rec director. Uh, I think I think we need to provide some guidance mm -hmm. to Celia. I mean, yeah, I, as to what I, we're I, I, because she's got to present in front of the budget to me next uh, week. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and you know, at least we got to give her our thoughts on what we're thinking. And, yeah, um, I can email her. Next uh, Wednesday. No, have her come in Monday. Are you um, talking to her individually or? Uh, no, no, no. Well, I'm the rec. Um, yeah, I know. I know. Um, yeah. issue, so okay. I can reach out to her. Um, and I'll just I'll keep the board up, of course, and kind of summarize what we're thinking about. You know, the need for a better plan. Right. I actually responded. Um, so Kelly Anderson kind of I read emailed. Email. I saw. Her, her, mm -hmm. um, and you saw my response mm -hmm. where. I said, you know, we really feel it's important to have a, a good plan before we hire somebody. Talk about school, not position, yeah. right? Yeah. 
And I, so I asked her if she would consider coming in to talk to us and maybe help them with the effort because she has quite a bit of experience. Um, I didn't get back to her yet, but I can reach out to her again. Why did you guys so uh, come in blind about what, how, what's the, has the school board given numbers for the budget? Yeah, um, it came last night. Last <laughs> night? Was it I forwarded low? It, no, it's an email. Okay. I, I guess I'll email because I haven't really opened the spreadsheet yet, but that was like, what, 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock today? Um, <clears throat> it was last night. Oh, was? Yeah. Uh, and, well, the summary is um, enrollments down. On both yeah. schools? Yeah. Okay, so that means costs are up. Yeah. I have uh, probably 15 students on both grade school and Marshwood um, High, Marshwood Junior High High. So we're, we're down to um, a total of 273 students. Kim, when she did the million when so. she did the numbers, she reversed them. There's 138 at the middle and high, and 134 at the grade. Correct. So, so how much is the school budget going up? Um, so like it, they haven't 10? proposed that yet. Currently, sounds like it's going to go up quite a bit. They haven't proposed it, mm -hmm. um, but currently they were at 5.992 million. That was the budget she showed us yesterday. And that's what's in the email. Okay. Um, I'd like to think the budget is not going to go up. And, that's and, and what, is that? oh, what, is, what is that over last year? Oh, How about over this year? I think that's what, I, I guess, are they giving back? They are expecting to give, was it one Because there's less students who are paying X amount. And right, yeah, we're getting so back. For uh, March, we're getting something. Uh, well, we're not getting it back. We're just not paying tuition. It's right? kind of yeah. like a hold on a credit card right, yeah. mm -hmm. um, yeah. See that bottom line though is gonna I think you know if it was hypothetically speaking seventeen five a student and you get less students then next year it would be like eighteen seventy five a student. I, I, I think it's like twenty something. Well I'm just making numbers up. It's twenty two now. But we there's nothing we can do about that. All we can no. consider is the tax oh. impact as it relates to the town. You know? It's um, a huge part of it, mm -hmm. as you know. I do. Yeah. Um, and then how about, well, that $100,000, did Chuck's email make sense of one that he followed up on a little bit by no pain? And oh, um, so I did. So the one work was coming out of the issue. Bed, yeah. um, it's not coming out of operating um, or revenue. Um, it is coming out of, actually, I can read that. Um, so it's... We have like $2 million in funds. Is it coming out of that? But it has nothing to do with the operating budgets for now. All right. So, um, so it basically says um, they spoke to Tom Dumas and Paula. Um, from an accounting standpoint, um, they're going to going to create liability in their accounting software for the total payment owed over three years. Three checks over those three years will be attributed to abatement overlay expense and they'll create a general journal entry to offset the liability. So um, we won't see those amounts in the budget, um, <coughs> just in the balance sheet. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. So it looks like, um, so no effect on the budget. And, okay. Um, it does not appear that money, the money was set aside to cover the liability. Um, the town has plenty of funds from which to draw to pay Wentworth Douglas Hospital. Um, you can find a list of the funds in the uh, treasurer's office. As of 9.30, the town has over $2 million in its investment fund, plus over 700000 in an account from which the checks are drawn. Um, obviously, we want to make sure that over the next two years, that eighty-two thousand dollars is available each October to cover those Wentworth Douglas abatements. Don't see an issue. So they're going to take money out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. oh. um, so, so Jeff, you wanted to know. Um, all right. So, well, before I get too far down this path, okay. uh, do we want to go through this budget again? What do we have for percentage right now? Um, I was still at one. Well, let me let me just highlight. Oh, the you could add these back in. Right? Um, I did. Yeah. Actually, I had that original budget. So. Um, so, Jack, the answer is. Just 
Just a comment to the file box, I think it was nice. Thank you. Oh, it's all separated. Kind of, kind of hard to notice at night, but I came to the day. Oh, I came to see Chuck the other day. Yeah. They, they do such a good job breaking it up now. Um, I'm not sure if it's the right They don't have drainage. So... Those flower pots so, down? I was shocked. I've been wondering why the drainage so, didn't thrive. Okay. Oh, here, 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 all right, here's the, the budget. Um, so the fiscal year 2021 budget was 5855412 But the budget that um, Aaron provided last night was five million two nine second. That's quite a bit down. So mm -hmm. five million two hundred. So their current budget, um, she said it was five. Five million nine hundred ninety-two thousand four hundred and thirty-six dollars is what the budget was. Huh. So, thanks. Right. That's pretty close to that. Most of the numbers are pretty close. So the hundred thousand dollars, though, it would have been. It's just basically for a company where it would have still been abated. They still wouldn't have paid that money. It would have been. Right, if it right. was handled correctly. Right, it's just that... They should have never paid, right? Right, yeah. okay. All right, um, so this budget, so the things we highlighted um, were the 5%, um, if you want, I can try to plug in. No, go ahead, okay. because I, 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 um, I mean... And you guys have the... Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. I have it right here. Anyway. Um, so we agree for 5% across the board. I agree with that. But now, um, contingent upon having job descriptions and basic performance reviews. Right. Um, and then, um, so that was for executive office, town clerk, um, tax collector. The TA doesn't tell me. Um, the, um, so the planning, um, the, the one issue I had, and I, you know, I'm reluctant to say it, but so for land use um, support, um, so we found out that Sarah was already at sixteen sixteen an hour. Um, there was a time when we were on the budget committee and um, the select board said, you know, that all of the recording people, the secretaries, would have the same wage. But now we think we're kind of deviating from that, um, and so that's my only concern. You know, is is just the fluctuate, well, and then um, who voted on this, who voted to increase it to 16, 16, when all the other secretaries, like some I think is like 15. Um, so that's my concern about doing a 5% on that line, mm -hmm. um, because she's already over the other secretaries. No, I, I thought what you're saying, and I think some of the arguments, because she has to do work up front and stuff, but still, still now do hourly work. Rate and I mean, part of its experience too. I mean, I don't know how long she's been doing it for, but I think I personally would agree with you that I personally agree with you that if she is a higher up than the other one, or the other ones, that we should. I don't want to say freeze, but instead of a five percent, maybe a one percent, and continue with five percent for the other. Take her. Jack, do you have any input on that? I don't because I don't know enough about it. Okay. Um, so besides you, I'm trying to see who else um, is up at the The budget. 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 And we don't know what that is either. And where that comes out of, for that matter. And who does plan? Oh, Sarah does plan. Right. Well, Sarah does plan in zone. Yeah. So we have three minute days? Mm -hmm. at, at least three. Huh. Well, and then there's. At well, town. What's that? At the deliberative, isn't someone hired for that as well? Yeah. Does that come out of the town clerk's budget? 
That would be, that makes sense. Okay. Um, so that one, that one, um, you know, I have a, a little bit of reluctance about because you know, I just. I no, I agree. It, I don't remember. I don't remember the reason why. Oh yeah, you are the town administrator. There was a reason why, and I think part of it was just because she was handling the planning board stuff, and she was spending more time with, like, maybe doing registry stuff or stuff like that. But. So that was, um, right. So maybe it's a different position. Who does she report to? Um, planning board and zoning board. They don't but, not oh, really report to anybody, but really us, I guess. Probably us, yeah. Um, she was reporting to Caroline, I believe, before. So maybe we need to have a conversation. That's what I'm saying. Is like, how do we get different. feedback? Yeah. That's <laughs> maybe her job is diff different than just, you know, um, it, maybe it's more of an administrative system. It may be, yeah, it, it may be research and plots and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's very possible. Um, I can you, certainly, oh, we can ask her to join us if you want. Yeah, when do we have a come in? Okay. Um, is Monday okay? Monday's fine. Yeah, I think Monday's, really, we're, we're doing pretty well now, so yeah. I think Monday looks good. Um, all right, so I'm gonna... I think they have a library meeting. On Monday? Mm -hmm. You guys don't want me taking that as trust me. Um, but she doesn't have to be there for the whole thing. Oh. So. Mm. She does, she's at the library. Okay. Um, so town clerk was the adjustment. Um, tax clerk, uh, let's see here. And then still open items are the health insurance, life insurance, etc. Yeah, I don't know that until it comes in. What about um, the, uh, so the state? The state, has, the state hasn't set the tax yet. Um, no. No. Um, oh, there was a question, right, we should have asked Mark who was here about um, the fire station, um, second uh, two inch meter thing, but I don't know that this much we can do. So that was another highlighted thing. Can someone? I know Chuck can, can, I don't want to say me because I probably won't get a chance to do it in the near future, but can someone follow up with the state about, about, about how they got more of that tax, tax rate? Would Chuck be able to do that? Well, well, if they get back to us, so we're waiting to get, to hear back from them. So we've submitted everything that we need to submit. Right, but sometimes and I'm just wondering, you know, squeaky wheel gets if you, mm -hmm. you know, call a few times and ask and they, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, I just they do the cities I, and then the towns. So you don't have no, it just doesn't you have no say it's done when it's done. Even if you try to <laughs> I don't mean push them, but you know, try to get the information. So the road agent mm -hmm. is the one change um, that we have to um, we have to the big battery decide. Yeah. Um, have you guys both been able to get into their website for that? Have you set anything up from I haven't no, I haven't looked at it. I did, you can get I into the website the and get about seventy five percent of the information on it. Yeah. But if you like it, if you get on and there's a little little tab up here that says uh, I don't know what it says, but you click it to log on and yeah. it, it'll ask you for your email. Since it, it sends you a link with the email and all you do is click it and it gives you a uh, Dummy password you fill yeah, out. Yeah, I'm, I'm in it. You have to do it within 24 hours. Yeah, I'm in it. Okay. I'm, so you got it. You can get in it. I can get in it. Yeah. Have you found a lot of information in it? I, pardon me? Have you found Have you found Yeah, I have found it. So, what I'm finding is what I haven't got yet is there's two other modules. I have Nolan Territory, but there's also one on planning. Yeah. And there's also one on um, budgeting, mm -hmm. which I'd like to get both of those books. I'll find out how I do that too. We should actually all three of us. We should all get yeah. I think you can get that information from the Municipal Association as to getting those books. Yeah, that's why I got no the no territory. But um, I think there's a fee. We, we, do you know off the top of your head if we pay like a fee every year for them too, don't we? Mm. Like three grand, it's almost. I know, so is it that much? So I was seeing these the other day. I was reading. Is that un unlimited users or is that? Yeah, it's like it's just you know, someone like Dover. Dover it's only like Dover might pay him thirty thousand because it goes by you know, okay. everybody pays him a little bit to the pot, so to speak. Okay. Um. So that. Um. So with 
um, if we move George to sixty thousand, it's an eight percent increase on that line, um, and then um, it ends up being a three percent increase overall for highways um, for fourteen thousand four hundred ninety-two dollars. So George got a George will be if we decide to agree with this, George will basically get an eight percent increase, right? Yep. So if we gave him a five percent increase, that would be so I'm just, I just have that would be about fifty nine, right? I see it. I'm put it back. It's just, um, I'm just figuring on the numbers because everybody got five percent. No, it would be five percent increases twenty seven eighty five. That brings them to fifty eight four seventy seven. You know, the other thing, I'm just going to throw this out there. I'm not saying now. I'm just saying somewhere in the future there may be a situation where we may want to think about having a position that is a full-time position that, I don't know, maybe it would be too much. Maybe I'm just thinking out of the box, but that could do both highway and transfer. Mm -hmm. That's what it was in 2017. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With no um, help. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. I think it is more, it's more complex now than it was, mm -hmm. which is different. I'm pretty sure, so a friend of mine is, does Berwick, and I think he does both road and um, transfer station. Um, it's something to think about. Um, I'm not saying George doesn't say busy, but I don't know, I'll, I'll leave it that one. Um, but, and you know, well, I mean, I think you have to have the right person that can do both. You know. Well, that's what I'm right. saying. Is that, that, that's, that's my concern with where we are. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think George can really do, like, the budget or right, right. the computer mm -hmm. right. that we need. Right. He, he doesn't have the skills. Yeah. And he'll admit it. I mean, yeah. he just doesn't have it. Yeah. Dad's been a godsend to him. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, you know, quite frankly, I think until we sort it out, maybe we do 5%. But we have to sort out um, if we're going I, I, to fill I, that other position. Yeah. Okay. But I thought we kind of alluded that we were giving them that. Okay. Well, yeah, I sort of alluded to that. I, I'm, and I was just very frank that I am speaking for myself. Okay. Yeah, but I think we um, agreed to that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel we agreed to that. Yeah, I do too. I, I, feel, I still think we need to kind of sort out um, whether it should be one position or two. You know. Well, we can figure that out, but for right now, let's let's assume we're going to give him the 60 grand. Has he stayed at the 55 forever? No, mm -hmm. he started at 52 in 2018, went to 54 in 2019, went to 55, 693 in 2021. Okay. So, um, yeah, there's been adjustments. All right, so I put that in. Um, and then, so that's all. Let's see what else is there. So the transfer station attendance, um, we talked about that. And then well, I would, I would figure years. out uh, just what is that salary? I'm sorry, Jack. What's that salary? Uh, what? I have it. It's um. It was 18 something an hour. It wasn't quite 19. Mm -hmm. oh, it, it is 18 something. How many hours is it allocated for? Um, I have to look up. Right, I just wonder if it's like 20, 25, 30. Alright, so um, I adjust, I'm gonna, um, I adjusted the. Um, I think he makes 19,000, Paul, because he, I talked to him this morning and he said he's going to get like 24.9 at, at the new place. Yeah, in five minutes. Away from his house, so mm -hmm. yeah, so that wasn't that much. Yeah. Okay, so the, the open items are um, the rec director. So I made a note, um, I made a note so to with the rec, Cecilia. Yep, with the rec director, it was I understand what their, their need is and what they're thinking about, but I kind of mentioned it a while ago that they're kind of putting. I hired a rec director first without any plan or anything. You're kind of putting the car in front of the horse. 
Right. And also, you need to, I, I think you need to look at it and say, does it need to be full time, part time? Especially, you, you're looking at the amount of kids is going down. Yeah, they're looking at, That's I point. think part time would be, mm -hmm. if we're going to. Well, if we're going to consider, we're, we're going to consider part time. Anyway. That's all she gave us was part time yeah. data. Um, yeah. So it's in that spreadsheet that yeah. we guys hourly, proposed hourly rates, the number of hours, um, and so she broke it all down. That's in her presentation. Um, and it's still, I mean, it ends up being somewhere between an eight and ten thousand dollar position. Honestly, that, so that's not much for the taxpayers of town if it, if it's. Well, it is a lot of money for the taxpayers, I should say. But if it's a program that can be well executed and used, it can that be supported by private groups? You know, like could be. getting companies to sponsor things and events? Uh, I would imagine. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if there's that much. When they first got the, when they first get the wreck off off the ground, Celia did a lot of going around and getting donations and grants and doing a lot of stuff to, to help bring in English. See, and Dad used to pay for all the t-shirts. That's what I'm saying is, you know, like little league teams get all these sponsors, maybe you get something for the wreck. I don't know. You might, but you're talking about equipment stuff. You're not talking about someone throwing it in. No, no, no. Well, she got stuff from Dick's Sporting Goods. She got... She she was able to get stuff from there, but she that was put in a whole. Came from. Yeah. And the rec director is for everything year round for the rest of the town. Right, but she she knows how to get things going so that to get because she also put in for coffee with the seniors for three hundred. I'm not opposed to giving something to this. I just, I, I, I really would like to see some sort of a plan or something. I mean, mm -hmm. we're not just flying without a plan. Okay. Well, I'll ask her to come in on Monday. That's good. Um, the, one um, thing so that, that was the, the one thing the rec department that has been stressed for the last quarter, it's been stressed for at least that's I don't know if it's the time, times nowadays, but they do need some help with volunteers. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have I agree with that. three or four people. Right. I agree with that. Is that Lynn Bowell still? She, she, yeah, she helps, like, she volunteers up a little bit and take the minutes. I would think she would be a wonderful person to come up with a plan. Yeah, you know what? Well, yeah, I wouldn't disagree with you. I think I think I might she, 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 she's a... Uh, she was a former teacher. And I think if she could communicate yeah. well with uh, Cecilia, and she could maybe... I think Cecilia, hey, I could, I, I could do this. I think Cecilia needs a little guidance. What I'm trying to say. Yep. Yep. Right. It's a different place. Yeah. I think, well, yeah. and that's why I Why don't you ask Lynn, Paul? That's why another reason I reached out to Kelly Anderson. Were you here for that conversation? Yeah, Kelly is kind of like, like, just for information, not to, like, volunteer or anything, because Kelly, I think, is done with that. Too high-end. No, no, I didn't say she's Kelly. Got lot, she's got a lot of experience. No, I just think she's, she's gone through so many kids' help, and all. it's like, okay, I'm, I'm done with that. But I could oh, be. Oh, you think she's very dumb? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I do. Okay. Why are you trying to see if she wants to get back involved? Well, I just think that she has a lot of great experience, you know. Um, she's she very active. Oh, you mean to do it? Um, well, to help guide the program. Oh, she would be great for that. Yeah. Um, okay. I agree. It's so, just if, she, if, you know, it's, she also has five kids, so if you get her the volunteer. Well, some of them are growing up now. I know. Mm -hmm. One's in college already. Right. Right. Uh, Raya is. Yeah, that's right. Um, so right now, with the changes from so the last time um, we met and went through them, yeah. with the adjustments for George um, and um, Mark, yeah. and not including a, the rec director at this point, which was in there for thirteen thousand, um, brings us to 
um, an increase in a proposed budget of $33,269, which is 1.36% increase on the operating budget from 2021 to 2022. If you added seven grand in for a rec director, what would it be? $12,354. So what's acceptable? So, well, so she had asked for 13 for that line. Yeah. Um, and I think at the very bottom, I have, oh, I, actually I can tell you what they were. Um, her proposed numbers. So, at, well, no, even at the low end, um, 10 hours a week, $15 an hour, um, with taxes, uh, is 80, almost $8,400. I don't think you're going to get a rec director for $15 an hour. I think that at a minimum it would have to be 18 for 10 hours a week um, is $10,076. At um, twenty dollars an hour for ten hours is eleven thousand one hundred and ninety-six dollars. So is one point six good or bad? It's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's good. I mean that would be acceptable. Yeah, I mean no, I, I was hoping for one, mm -hmm. but I'm not complaining. I mean we're just. Well, when you kind of look at how at everything's going on, oh, I know. I mean, well, inflation we costs that, right? and everything. I mean, we're going to get hit by yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, we can go with this right now for sure, and then maybe something else. That's that's the all I'm thinking is, you know, I, I don't know whether it's acceptable or not acceptable, but yeah. uh, no, it if, is. if it's within range, it's acceptable. Mm -hmm. But then you have to consider mm -hmm. reduced revenue mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all look at that. Side. So, well, sure. reduced revenue part of it, a very small percent of it is. It, the hotel and mail tax went from 8% down to 7.5%. So that's a 0.5% for all towns across the state, which would have been a small amount. You know, what else? Do we know what else we lost in revenue? Yep. Um, so... I bet you it was because the town hall was closed. Um, well, definitely motor vehicles is down. It was um, proposed at 655, um, 655,000. Mm -hmm. um, we're at 449,000, mm. almost $450,000. That's quite a bit. That's a lot. That's, so that's where the, the that's the bulk of it. That's the bulk right there. Okay. Well, people have hard times buying new cars. Well, they can't get them. They're buying either. cars like crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. My my significant other is in the car business, and it's crazy. People they're buying used. They're buying anything that's there, yeah. but they're not there. Yeah. They're just not registering them. Um, and then let's see, building permits is down by about nine thousand. Um, <laughs> other licensing and fees, which is made up of um, all kinds of things. So building permits being down is something, again, I'm just talking off the cuff here, but I have a concern, it's been a concern for a while, it's been addressed that there's a percentage of people who can't get them. No, you see Aren't like getting work old. done without mm -hmm. the permit. And there was never a permit. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it's, I think it's happening it's a lot. after the fact, like I know I don't know if it's accurate. We should probably talk to Tom. I don't want. I don't want to comply with Tom's not doing his job. But I know there's probably two or three, pre two or three pieces of property in Town Walls over the last year that got serious renovations, and I don't think everyone to the plan. Mm -hmm. And that's revenue for the town. Yeah, it is. So I think while I'm thinking about this and stuff, I think I'd like to, you know, talk to Tom. I think we should and find out about that and find out. I actually take that back. It isn't revenue. We're not down um, three fifty thousand in revenue. We're down more like three hundred thousand in revenue. Mm-hmm. Because we have anticipated revenue of one point two five six million, and year to date is nine hundred and two. Yeah, because he just Jack said just the number you talked about between the six seventy five and the four something would have been two hundred alone. Right. Um. 
but next year's anticipated revenue is down by 50000 That's what Caroline gave you? Who gave you that? Mm -hmm. This was Caroline's um, spreadsheet that she managed the estimated revenue. So revenue, of, revenue we can get from you know, automobiles and stuff, revenue we obviously get from businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, again, thinking outside of the box, at some point, I want to plan and board now, but that's something that's added that we should really work, work on. Economic development? The master plan and economic development, and really. Yeah. It's on our we, list. We have a little bit of room out there. Yeah. It's on uh, our no. no, I know it is. I know. But um, some more revenue coming into the town would be. Yeah, agreed. Nice. Oh, well, Selmay came up with a good idea that we ought to look at solar panels and put them in the wetlands. Can you do that? Care. I don't know. Oh, I beg to differ. In the wetlands? No. They put them in, in Hampton Falls, right in the marsh. Huh. I don't know. I, 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 well, I maybe, haven't had time maybe to look at it. Maybe the federal <laughs> government gives, you know, different... Yeah. If you try to put a house out there, there's no way. Okay. Yeah. No. Maybe the federal government gives special... I don't know. I, it's yeah, beyond. I don't know either. But I do have someone for you to talk with. Okay. You know, and I can, I can reach out, I'm curious, like, I'll just give you a for instance. Well, actually, there's three or four people with residents in town. Yeah. Um, Linda mm -hmm. McGevin, Rob, Judge Roberts, and there's another house out there. I can't think of who it is right now. All have big, yes. all have big panels out there. Uh, my neighbor across the street, and I'm wondering how much they get as a kickback yeah. from the power company. Power companies are doing that all the time, though. If you get land, they'll put them out there. When I was flying home from uh, San Diego, San Diego, I flew west. They show you the route you're flying, and I was just past the UMA Yuma, Yuma Desert. There's a there's a solar panel found out there that must go miles, fifty miles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I'm at thirty thousand feet, and all you see is this huge mirror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So we're done here. Um. Yes. Okay. All right. So I'll um, firm up these numbers. Um, and I will say When is the next budget? Next Wednesday again? Monday? No, the next budget. Yeah. Oh, budget Wednesday. 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 Yeah. Um, so it would be nice if we could get Celia and Sarah in here and maybe try to finalize something for that meeting. That'd be great. Yep. We can I'm do that. Be good. Let's do it Monday. Okay. The other thing I think we need to speak about Monday is MRI. Yes. Yeah. What are we doing with that? Oh, uh, Mike's coming in on Monday. He's coming in. So we already signed him up. I signed the document. Did you? The other thing, hey, mm -hmm. the thing we Did you both sign the document? Because I noticed it's gone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That was the other, that was last week. Oh wait, I came in. That's right. I came in Tuesday. So my days are all screwed up. I didn't work Monday night. I ended up getting home at like four in the morning. So I took Tuesday off. So I'm thinking today's like Tuesday. So that's like Thursday. So if you guys both sign the document, we're in the contract. Yep. Um, I just didn't know that they had signed it. Oh, he sent us a copy back? No, not yet. That's what I meant. <laughs> All right, so did you guys make a motion to start? We started officially, so yeah. we did. Does anyone make a motion to adjourn? Um, I make a motion to adjourn. Well, Second. we all done? Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff in here.